Hi there everybody. Let's take a look at a French Maz 36 rifle that I brought back from Tulsa. So things are getting really crowded on my desktop here because of my uh, my other hobby that I started which is ham radio. I've got three or four radios and some packet equipment and other junk hanging around on the table now. But uh, I didn't want to wait on, until I did a full uh, strip down and, and did all the final research before starting to show you some of the rifles I picked up at uh, Wanamaker. So basically what, what this uh, is going to be about today is going to be the French Maz MAS 36 rifle. Uh, it's a French weapon. Uh, it's a bolt action weapon that was used in World War II. It was primarily a supplemental weapon that was used to back up the 49/56 in the in the second uh, the second World War. Uh, it's a very simple firearm. It it, uh, it holds up very well. This is a fairly good example of an early one. Uh, as far as I can tell, this one was made uh, before the armistice, so it's pre. 1940, but it was accepted in 1940, and we'll get to that when we talk about the markings and stuff. Uh, they're pretty distinctive with this funny forward-facing uh, uh, bolt uh, handle, and that was the thought was to get the bolt handle right over the trigger, so you could drop right down under the trigger. And nobody can, nobody knows if that was uh, actually useful or not, but uh, that's one of the things they did. So what I want to do is is go through the firearm for you and, and show you uh, some of its features and markings and stuff and what actually makes this one a fairly interesting uh, firearm uh, for me. Uh, first of all, the numbers on this, uh, the serial numbers on this, and most of the serial numbers you start you start here. Here, let me uh, turn the gun around bring it up to the camera so you can see serial number on the side. Well, there's also, there's also a serial number here on the trigger guard, and there's another one up here on the, on the well, get the stupid uh, strap out of the way, and there's, there's another one here on the four strap, and uh, there's one on the back of the stock, and all of these serial numbers match. The only two serial numbers that there's only three spots where the serial numbers aren't correct. The first one is the bolt. The bolt does not have a matching serial number. The uh, the uh, bayonet, which we'll talk about later on, is also not a matching serial number. And there's supposed to be a, a serial number stamped in this floor plate. I believe this floor plate and the spring in uh, follower have been replaced on this gun, and I'll tell you I'll tell you why about that a little later. Um, the, the serial number on this gun, uh, which is a K series serial number, dates it, uh, it, it because it was 25 444. They had about 33,000 of these K series finished before the uh, the 1940 <coughs> armistice. Uh, so uh, that that matches in well with with the rest of the the stuff that we see here. And again, we do, we don't have a serial number on the floor plate. The bolt is not matching, and the uh, the uh, bayonet is not a matching serial. It is a serialized part, but it is not a matching serialized serial number. Uh, on these guns, there's a rondelle on the bottom. And in fact, I'm going to take the camera down and see if we can do this a little easier. Uh, make sure I don't touch my keyboard. So there's a rondelle. Here, on the bottom of the the bottom of the gun, and this rondelle gives you the uh, gives you the final acceptance marks for this. And uh, I don't know if you can read it as well as I can, but uh, up here is the French word for June, up there, and then down here is 1940. Now this is kind of hard to see, and the reason it's kind of hard to see, and I, and I don't think you'll be able to see it, uh, well maybe if I get this a little closer, you might just, let me see if I can get it, the shadows to work just right, but there is actually, this firearm is a Nazi capture weapon, and one of the reasons you can't see the M and the A too terribly well on this 
is because the uh, little Nazi chicken has been over stamped right over here and it, I, I don't think you guys can see it but there is the Nazi eagle with the swastika underneath it it's very faint but it can be seen under here uh, another place that you can find it on the firearm which is a lot easier to see is right here underneath the uh, underneath the wrist yeah and I, I think you can see that really well so you can see the Nazi uh, eagle with the with the uh, swastika underneath. So this was a Nazi capture firearm, which which makes it a little bit more interesting. I had to pay a bit of a premium for it because of that. Uh, so we talked about the dates, and, and this is a pre uh, a pre armistice gun. There's three or four things that that show you that. So I'm going to bring the camera down but I'm going to leave it on the stand now so I can move the gun around a little easier. Uh, so one of the things that shows you that is the fact that the front sights have a set of wings on them instead of a circular cover. So that, that's what's this one way you know that. Okay. Um, another thing that tells you that is the, oh, and it, I, I don't know if this is uh, actual real or not, but it, it did come with a, a pretty neat... Uh, leather strap. I do not know if that's period correct or not. But this barrel band in the center here with this big open hole is another indicator that uh, this is a pre a pre uh, armistice firearm. A third one is the sight. There's two things about the rear sight that tell you it's pre. The first one is you see these ribs inside here well, those are actually the catches for the for the elevation. And the second thing is, there's no button here. On a on a on a later model gun, the notches are cut in the side here, and there's a button here to slide this forward. You notice I can't slide this forward. What you have to do on this one is you actually have to depress the peep sight, and then you can slide the the uh, the uh, range indicator here forward and backwards. So that also tells you that it is a a pre armistice firearm, an early an early firearm. So uh, pretty slick. This one is chambered in uh, 7.5 by 54 I believe it is. It's the same one that my uh, Maz 49 slash 56 semi-automatic ba battle rifle is in. Uh, so it, it has all the right features of, a, of, of the older gun. It's got the front sight, the rear sight, the mounting sling. Uh, there, is a, there is probably, I am told, there is probably a date, if I remove all of this wood, there is a date on the barrel, but I haven't, I haven't done a full strip on this thing yet, so the, you guys don't know that. Um, the, uh, and uh, like I said, this follower, I believe the follow, while the follower plate is the correct plate, it is not serialized and the early guns had a chamfer, a cutout on the follower back here so that you could put the gun back in battery without that. Now they changed that later in the war they realized guys were were closing it and then realizing that the gun was empty and then they had to open it up again and reload it. So they, they actually changed it to, I believe this is a post uh, follower. I believe this is a post uh, uh, armistice follower. So that when they were liberated in 44 uh, and they started making these again, they, they changed the design of this to, to stop this from coming forward. Um, but this gun, this is not correct for this gun. This gun should have had the one that has the cut in it that allows this uh, to come forward. Um, there's no safety on this gun at all. Uh, basically, the uh, manual of arms was to load it uh, uh, with four, uh, well, five, I'm sorry, load it with five, but hold them down and slide, the, and slide it closed so you did not have a round in the chamber. And if you were told you, you needed to fire, you would, at that time, jack went in and, and let it rip. Uh, these guns were not used primarily by frontline troops. These were used by support troops, people behind the lines, uh, you know, drivers and stuff like that. That's what this firearm was really for, was to, to get something in their hands. 
Uh, let's take a quick look at the bayonet. It's kind of cool. Uh, it has a, a bayonet that actually goes down inside this uh, this area, and it's got a, a little button on it, and you pull it out, and it's your standard French cruciform, you know, just a big X, you know, pig sticker, and basically you stick it in the other way, and now the other pressable, you know, when you push one, the other one goes down too, so that's how, that's how you get it back off of there again, so that, that's, that's pretty neat, and like I said before, this one does have a serial number on it, but it is not the correct serial number for this gun. But I, a lot of these guns, you, you don't get them with the uh, a bayonet at all, so I was pretty happy about that. Um, one bad, sort of bad thing about it, so I, I, believe the, I believe the floor plate of the magazine has been replaced, um, and, and the spring and the, uh, and the follower. Uh, the other thing is, there's supposed to be a stacking lug here. So there should be a stacking lug that sticks out of the gun about that far. And it's pretty easy to see, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a cutoff. You can see where someone actually took like a Dremel tool and actually uh, cut that off. And on the side that's closest to the barrel, you can actually see a little piece of that sticking up. So someone cut that off, which is kind of too bad because, uh, you know, it's nice to have them all intact. But right, right, down, right down in here... I don't know if you can hear that tick 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 sound, but that's me snapping on it where it's been uh, where it's been done. So a uh, really nice gun. I'll tell you, when I took the bolt out of it and looked at it, it has a chrome line barrel, and the barrel is immaculate. It's in beautiful shape, uh, very very clean, uh, no dirt, no uh, barely any dust, and uh, no you know no pitting and anything at all. Uh, even though the the uh, the firearm uh, furniture is a little banged up. It's not bad, but it's a little banged up. Uh, it's in very nice shape. Uh, one of the few things, other things that's bad about it, it looks like somebody dripped some paint on it. You can see this, this sort of khaki green paint that's on here. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that off without uh, damaging the finish underneath, so I may end up having to leave it alone. But uh, the fact that it is a, a pre-armistice firearm, uh, with, like I said, with a couple small uh, replacements and uh, damage, a little bit of damage, uh, and that it's a Nazi capture gun, really make this a very interesting gun for me. So uh, I hope you enjoyed looking at it, uh, and hopefully I'll strip it down and take it out to the range, and we'll have a range video on it and uh, see how it shoots, since I do have the ammunition for the 4956 that should fit into this. And, and this gun was meant to be loaded with stripper clips. So they, and, and the French actually used aluminum stripper clips. Everybody else used steel, but they, had, they tried aluminum. And it's got the little finger cut out, you know, to make it easy to, to get the, the stripper clip all the way down with your thumb. So again, I hope you enjoyed seeing this. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Another interesting gun uh, brought home from Wanamaker. And, uh, you know, in the next, hopefully in not too long a time, I'll show you the, uh, the second rifle that I brought home. Thanks a lot for watching, and have a great day. Just a quick thing in the background. Uh, hey, go to Forgotten Weapons and go look at the Moz 36. The backup rifle is called to action. Uh, uh, he's got, you'll hear a lot of the stuff I just said, but he gives you a lot better uh, you know, overview of the rifle and all that kind of stuff. A very interesting thing to watch.